So I welcome you to Providence Care St. Mary's of the Lake Hospital. We're pleased you could join us today, especially today, because today we're celebrating our Founders Day, which um, uh, on December the 13th, that's today, 152 years ago, the, the Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul came to Kingston to begin uh, their mission. So we're also celebrating um, and honoring the ways our staff and our volunteers uh, across Providence Care provide service in, in support of our mission to many, many people across Southeastern Ontario. And what a wonderful day to celebrate Founders Day. You know, actually, this date was moved from yesterday at my request so I could be here, but I had no idea <laughs> it was Founders Day as well. You know, almost 60 years ago, I came into uh, St. Mary's of the Lake Hospital when my late father worked here for about 10 years, 12, 10 to 12 years, as the head maintenance man. The best working years he spent in his entire life. opportunity to work here at one point in time. So did my brother and sister. Uh, and my daughter works here right now. Fifteen years ago, I was at a meeting when the Sisters of Providence were asked to take over the psychiatric hospital site and the province decided to divest the mental health facilities to a good local organization. And I could think of no better organization than Providence Care. At that time, and I can remember the meeting quite well, it took place at, uh, thank you. The meeting took place at uh, the old psychiatric hospital grounds the sisters were promised that a new hospital would be built to combine the services that were provided at the psychiatric hospital and the services that would be provided or that were provided at the time here at St. Mary's Lake Hospital. The mental health services and the complex continuing care and palliative care services here at St. Mary's of the Lake. That promise was given to the sisters at that point of time. And after many, many years, 15 years as a matter of fact, it has taken in order to live up to that promise. And during that time, many interests have come forward. You know, this at the end of the day is not about the sisters. It is not about the people that work here, although they are excellent workers. It is not about the politicians. It is not about the unions. It is about only one thing and one thing only. And that is the best care surroundings for the most vulnerable in our society. Whether they have mental health issues, whether they've got palliative care issues, or complex continuing care issues. Many of the patients both here and at the psychiatric hospital stay there for a long, long period of time. The issue has never been whether or not they get the best care from the best health care providers in our community. That's been a given, that's been a constant under tremendous guidance of the Sisters of Providence. But what's also needed is that those facilities that those people stay in for such a long period of time is the best kind of facilities that we could provide for them. So that was the promise that was made 15 years ago and it's taken an awful long time, 15 years as a matter of fact, to get to the point where we are today. 
And I would like to thank so many people that have been involved in that. From the sisters who constantly were behind this. From the board members and people like Chris Cunningham, who was the first board chair that I met with. And then Larry Norman, who was after me for a long period of time. Jim Barton, and now Glenn Wood, on behalf of everybody, to do only one thing, and that is to get the facility built. Now, unfortunately, in this great, diverse community, this wonderful community of Kingston, there has been some controversy about that. And some people are saying, well, is it a public hospital? We don't need private care. But let me just tell you this, that if it was not for the alternate financing process that we're going through today, this hospital simply would not be built for the next 20 or 30 years. And that is the reality of the situation. The hospital that will be there at the end of the day will be publicly owned, publicly financed, publicly controlled, and publicly managed and publicly run in every way forward. So I would hope that now that these decisions have been made, and I don't want to put a negative aspect on this, okay, that the community will now totally support this for only one reason, and that reason is the care to the most vulnerable in our society, the people that will be living in this hospital, not at their own desire, but because of the needs that they have for a long period of time. So I'm just very pleased to be here and to thank each and every one of you for being involved in this. I, I've had a sneak preview of what the hospital is going to look like and I think it's going to be an absolutely fabulous facility and an absolutely the best location in Kingston. Because what people need when they go through the recuperation process is not only good medical care, not only the best physical facility, but they also need to be in a place where they can look out at nature and see the wonderful environment that we live in here in Kingston. So uh, there was many more things that I was going to say, but you've heard it all before. I'm not going to say it again. Congratulations to everyone that's been involved in this. I look forward to seeing the building completed within the next couple of years so that those individuals that need that special care that you and I don't have the immediate need for can be looked after in the best possible facility under the guidance of the Sisters of Providence. So with that, I just want to congratulate everybody and say, let's get the building going. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garrison. We're getting, we're getting closer to the unveiling. We're not, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, so to tell us more about the, uh, the milestone that we're, uh, that we're experiencing today, I want to call on Dale Kenny, the, the uh, President and CEO of Providence Care. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Providence Care. Uh, many people have been working on this project for a long time, and uh, although it has been a team effort, um, I have the pleasure this morning of thanking a few key individuals for, if not for them, uh, we actually wouldn't be here today. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank our redevelopment team, and you know who you are, um, at the risk of uh, not naming all the people, uh, as Glenn said. Um, but in particular, I'd like to thank Michael Ross, um, Krista Wells-Pierce, and Mark Willett. Um, who have been sort of a core team that's guided this process administratively for the past 10 to 15 years. Um, they, they've ensured that uh, we've had the right documents uh, in the right file at the right time. And you need that in order to have any project go forward. Uh, in addition, I'd like to thank Ben, ben and Beer, who's here from HOK. Uh, HOK is our planning and design consultant who we've been working with for the past couple of years and they played a key role also in uh, making sure that we got the right information in the right file at the right time. So thank you, Ben. <laughs> I 
I would also like to thank Kathy Dunn, who is our former president and CEO, who's been who guided this process uh, prior to me coming on board five years ago. So Kathy uh, was a key person. She's sitting there by the post. So thank you, Kathy, for uh, your leadership during that time. And uh, as uh, Minister Garrison has mentioned, um, our, our board chairs that have guided us through this journey, uh, Larry Norman, Jim Barton, and uh, Glenn Wood, um, it's been their commitment and uh, the work they've done with our boards of directors and the public that, is, that have ensured that we've had, uh, are going to have this state of, state of the art environment for our patients, clients, staff, and volunteers, so I thank you for that. Um, I would like to thank um, Carolyn Beatty, who was uh, mentioned earlier, Carolyn, and uh, Aaron Brashowski, who is not here, but from the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care for their help in ensuring that our specifications and process comply with ministry policy. Uh, it's uh, been a bit like a marriage with the Ministry of Health. We've had our good days and bad days, but uh, um, we, we did deliver on this, and uh, I, will, I really want to thank Carolyn and Anne for their assistance in this, so thank you, Carolyn. Phil Goodfellow, who is, uh, where Phil is, oh, he's back at the back there. Phil, Good, Phil Goodfellow, Yaprak Bertram, who is not here, and John McKendrick, who is also not here. Our friends at Infrastructure Ontario, um, thank you for your um, leadership. And uh, get a little emotional, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, and guiding us through the procurement process. Uh, I can tell you firsthand that uh, Infrastructure Ontario delivers on their commitment of on time and on budget. So thank you for that. So there are two critical success factors in a process that's been a project this size. Um, you need to have the community share the money uh, for your project, and you need, need to have the political will to achieve your approvals at the government level. You need to have your community share in order to have any capital project considered by the Ministry of Health for approval. And we achieved our community share through the Together We Can campaign. The public opened their wallets and made this new hospital a reality. The public understood the need for a better care environment for those people that are served by Providence Care and they supported us through their donations. It is really satisfying to know that we have public support for this new hospital. So I have a big thank you to the public and our donors and to University Hospitals Kingston Foundation and their Executive Director, Denise Cumming, for leading and running such a successful fundraising campaign. So thank you. The other, uh, as I mentioned, the other critical success factor is political will. Um, um, John Garrison and I have had a, a, relation, a, a relationship for the past number of years um, around this project. I can uh, still recall a few Saturdays um, sitting uh, with some friends, uh, might have been having a beer or two, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm looking at my cell phone and seeing this number come up and wondering, who's that? And so, hit the thing, it'd be John. And John, in working his process through the, through the, uh, through the government, would uh, have questions for me about the process, et cetera. And so um, I, uh, I found it very rewarding that John felt comfortable to call me on a, on a Saturday to, to do this, and, uh, and that uh, I was helping him uh, help us um, um, achieve, this, uh, uh, achieve this project. So uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to put into words the gratitude that, that we as a community owe our member of parliament, John Garrison. If it's not for Minister Garrison's tenacity at Queen's Park to have this project be a reality, we would not be here today. So on behalf of the people of Kingston and the people we serve, Minister Garrison, we thank you. And so now, I would like to present the new Providence Care Hospital.
exciting to see images like that. Uh, and to know that uh, all the, the thinking and the planning that we've done over the years for this hospital is finally uh, beginning. It's wonderful. Okay, so now I'd like to invite our friends from ITS to come up and give us a little more detail behind the images that you've seen. Thank you. Um, I just want to say this is why I love what I do. It's coming to here to these type of communities uh, and connecting um, to develop fantastic infrastructure for our country and our province. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is George Theodoropoulos and I'm an executive with uh, Integrated Team Solutions, ITS. Uh, ITS is a partnership between Elston and Fengate. Um, we are honored to be selected as uh, Provident Care's long-term partner for the redevelopment of this important facility. Uh, this project is indeed a significant milestone in the history of this institution and for ITS. We are grateful to Providence Care for their trust in our abilities and for the opportunity to join their community. Uh, we also want to recognize Providence Care's vision in leading the way in compassion and discovery for so many. Its mission of enhancing the quality of life of its patients by meeting the physical, emotional, and social, and spiritual needs of each person, and its values of respect and dignity, compassion, and stewardship. We embrace these words as we embark on our partnership with you. The new facility has been specifically designed to meet the changing needs of patients and the hospital's holistic approach to care. ITS is proud to be a partner in the hospital's mission to show compassion and respect for its patients throughout each person's road to recovery and reintegration into his or her community. Now a few words about Elliston and Fengate and who we are. Um, Elliston is North America's leading hospital builder with over 160 successful projects to date. Yes, a Canadian firm based in Ontario leads hospital design and construction in North America. Fengate is delighted to be a partner and privileged to be with Elliston on this project. Fengate is a Toronto-based investment and asset management firm specializing in infrastructure and real estate. Our clients are Canadian pension funds. We represent Canadian construction trade unions, universities and corporations as we invest their money in important community projects such as this one. Elliston and Fengate founded ITS on the principles of an integrated approach in undertaking public-private partnerships to ensure the interests of the design builder and the concessionaire are aligned with the long-term objectives of their public sector partner. And as is the case in all of ITS's project, Elliston is not only the design builder, but is also an equity investor in the concession. Our approach has allowed ITS to become Canada's most successful proponent of hospital design, build, and maintain concessions as measured by the number of projects. So to our friends at Providence Care, you have entrusted your project to a highly experienced team with a successful track record and a long-term view on partnership. So at this time, I would like to extend words of gratitude and appreciation to some of our key partners. First, I would like to acknowledge and thank the facility maintenance partner, Johnson Controls, and our architects, Parkin and Adamson, for their dedication and innovation in turning Providence Care's vision into reality you're an important reason for our success. We are also grateful to the staff at Infrastructure Ontario for the role they play in managing a transparent, fair and efficient procurement process. I can confidently say that Ontario is the envy of the world in alternative finance and procurement. And this is because of the staff at Infrastructure Ontario. You are truly world class. Finally, we would like to thank the entire team at Providence Care for giving us the opportunity to partner with you to make your vision a reality. We especially acknowledge and thank Dale Kenny, Chief Executive Officer, Michael Ross, Director of Project Redevelopment, and Krista Wells-Pierce, Incoming Director of Project Redevelopment, for their contribution in creating the partnership between our two organizations. We look forward to the successful opening of the new Providence Care Hospital. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, the folks from Parkin to come up and share some of the design details of the project. Good morning, everyone.
my name is Cameron Shantz and I'm a principal with Park and Architects and I'm here representing the design team uh, which is a joint venture between Park and Architects Limited and Adamson Associates uh, Architects. Dominic Verto from Adamson is sitting at the back there. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the design of the new hospital. And certainly the comments that Sister Shannon had earlier were um, wonderful because she talked about the um, pro uh, compassion and providence and the hands. And I think, you know, the, the building that we're trying to design for you really kind of is trying to represent that, that feeling and that caring uh, compassion that we see here uh, when we're working with everyone in the design of the building. You can see on the screen over here, um, we do have some images and I'm going to just talk a little bit about some of the design concepts that we were working with. Here you can see the main entrance, um, which provides an image, this new image for Providence. It's a contemporary look for the facility, but it also, um, you know, uh, is going to uh, relate to the roots of the uh, uh, Sisters of Providence and Providence Care itself. You can see that it has, we've tried to uh, reduce the height as much as possible by having a two-story building and uh, using residential quality materials with brick and stone and uh, wood details around the main entrance. We're trying to relate to the context with the building uh, in the historic context that it's within and within Kingston more generally. And also we've located the building with wonderful views uh, right by the edge of the lake. On the next slide, you can see the warm and inviting and welcoming main lobby for the hospital. We've tried to provide a light-filled double height space that will be able to uh, support functions like this in a, maybe a little bit more generous manner in the future. <laughs> But again, we're trying to re represent that, that caring feeling that, that Providence Care has. And we've even included an archival display area right within the main entrance so that uh, images from Providence Care's past and history can be displayed right at the front entrance of the building. So the building is really rooted in the history of its context and the history of the people that have worked here over the years. The next uh, image is obviously very important to Providence Care. It is the worship space which we've located centrally within the facility. And it's really symbolic of the centrality of the caring and spirituality of the uh, people that are work here in Providence Care's mission. We've, we've created a quiet, warm and worshipful space which have really wonderful views to Lake Ontario and the nature beyond. We're really trying to give a great quality to this space and we've located it close to the inpatient unit so it can be used not only by staff and family members but the patients themselves. The next slide uh, identifies uh, the, one of the central care desks within uh, the inpatient unit. You can see we're providing visibility and a welcoming uh, character for the clinical staff so that they're able to uh, view the patients um, and also provide that warm and welcoming uh, feeling as family members uh, come into the inpatient units. We have lots of natural light and views to the exterior here. And we've actually introduced uh, lounges uh, in this area with views to the lake that act, act as almost like living rooms for the folks that are here for an ex extended period of time. And those are the places where they can have social interaction with other patients with on, within their inpatient unit or some family members that may come in as well. The next slide identifies uh, one of the inpatient rooms. Uh, this uh, facility is really fabulous because it is going with single patient rooms. Everyone gets their own dedicated room with a dedicated washroom. This really uh, relates to things like privacy, uh, infection control, 
and create uh, an environment where that healing and transition can uh, proceed. Everyone will have views out to nature and out to the lake uh, wherever possible to help give it a bit of a residential feel because there are many people that stay here for quite some time. We've appointed the rooms with a desk, a shelf, a place to put cards, uh, flowers, and a little uh, opportunity for them to work. Also, we've done little touches like uh, the medical gases are hidden behind a uh, piece of artwork, again, so it doesn't have that institutional feel and has a more home-like or residential feel to it. We have, though, provided patient lists within each one of the rooms uh, to help in moving patients and to um, make sure that we uh, acknowledge the potential for uh, injuries for staff members by having an appropriate lift in each uh, each one of the rooms to cut down on those potential injuries. And then the final slide is one of the views of the therapeutic courtyards. Every one of the inpatient units in the building has a therapeutic courtyard, courtyard like this uh, on its level. And um, these provide access for patients, level access directly outside so that people can have uh, access to sun, to light, to views. There are opportunities for therapeutic and social gathering in those locations so that people, staff, family, and clients can celebrate the beautiful site, celebrate the uh, transition that people are going through in their lives, and have a place of healing where, where they can be outside. So to finish up, I would just uh, like to say on a more personal note, how, how inspiring it's been for me. It's an emotional time for all of us. <laughs> how inspiring it's been for me, the caring that I see in the people that are working here. Um, we've been working for a few months now on developing the design and uh, the amount of passion and care that people put into their jobs on a regular basis and how they're working towards creating the uh, best health care uh, facility that we can. Um, it, it's very inspiring to all of us. So thank you very much for having us here. Cameron and George. Now to uh, begin to wrap up this event, I want to call upon two people. Karen Blatchford, who's a, a former patient, and Dr. Chris Frank, who's the chair of our medical advisory committee, to come and speak about their <coughs> reaction to the new hospital design concept. Thank you and good morning. It's wonderful to see so many uh, friendly faces here today. It's great to see so many new images of Providence Care Hospital and uh, the great worst we've heard about it. But personally, in, in thinking about it, I think the new Providence Care Hospital provides an invaluable opportunity to enhance the lives of patients, to make it a special place for those who call Providence Care their home. The new hospital will provide patients and their families with an environment that's fresh and modern and that fosters caring and healing. And this could open a whole world of difference for someone who's living there, enhancing their independence. And that independence could lead to more self-confidence. And that's important in anyone's life. And for patients who are in rehabilitation, they will have an environment that's more conducive to healing and recovery. And it will be bright and beautiful. Our facility will have a welcoming, more home-like atmosphere. Patient rooms, treatment rooms and equipment, matched with the professional care of the staff, will enable patients to excel to the best of their abilities 
as they strive to meet their individual treatment or care goals. Patients will also enjoy more space, both indoors and outdoors, to visit with family and friends next to the beautiful backdrop of Lake Ontario. The prime waterfront location will allow for a safe and calming outdoor experience, helpful in the healing of both the body and the mind. This is a very exciting time for all of us as we work together creating a hospital that's second to none and that will be invaluable to the patient experience. And I spent almost six months here a few years ago. And it wasn't my original rehab. I had rehab here 20 years ago in another hospital. And I thought that I had learned it all and seen it all. But certainly my care was enhanced when I was here. And they certainly enhanced my life and enabled me to c continue and function back in the community. So a, a great deal of thanks to Providence Care for their tremendous work that they do now and they continue to do and will do in the future. Thank you. very much, Karen. Um, I've actually worked here at St. Mary's for 20 years now, and I've spent actually all of my career uh, in old Catholic hospitals. Um, <laughs> so I was at St. Joe's in London, I was at Hotel Du, and then I moved here. So, um, so I think that you work in a Catholic hospital because of all the things that have been mentioned. And I think uh, certainly when I arrived, the presence of the sisters was very much felt and was also heard because my office was right below one of the pianos. So I, I heard onward Christian soldiers fairly frequently. So some of the things that have really changed as well is that when I, I remember one of my night, first nights on call at here, and I came in around 9 o'clock, and the rooms were, the halls were dark, and there was a voice intoning an evening prayer. And actually, I wasn't quite sure what was going on at first, and I think that was kind of a very nice introduction to the hospital after hours. I think things have changed too because we have a much higher expectation of the flow of patients and the degree of pressure that is on all hospitals these days is so much larger and I think you know matching the compassionate care that's been mentioned with an efficient environment will be absolutely wonderful for Providence Care. So I think obviously the spirit that does not equal a building but the two are intimately related. So what are we leaving behind? We're leaving behind fairly small rooms. I think there's six rooms that actually have a view of the lake. Um, but you have to be in a certain position and it helps when the leaves are down. <laughs> um, you know, we have, uh, we have some issues on some of the floors, even in the new section of the hospital, when you open the bathroom door, when you open the door to the room, you can't actually enter the bathroom. So that actually has been a fall risk. So there's a number of things that, you know, simple things like that will make a big difference from a patient outcome point of view. Um, the other thing we'll be leaving behind is the porter's chairs. The porters are always sitting here between, uh, between runs. And uh, you know, I think that they won't have to be doing quite as much running because the design will be so much better that we won't be hauling patients down, broken elevators, etc. <laughs> what to look forward to, the beautiful setting was mentioned. Very few people know that before they put that footpath in, the Providence Care Hospital site was actually the best place in town for skinny dipping. <laughs> But we will have a, a space that really is designed to match our therapeutic goals. So Karen mentioned some of the aspects of her experience with care. We do do it in a, a pretty antiquated setting. So I can only think that we will not lose the spirit and the approach, but doing it in a, a high-level setting will be, will be quite an incredible experience for all of us. The amalgamation of all the staff in the two sites will clearly not be an absolutely straightforward thing, but it will be an excellent opportunity to share ideas, to share the things that we do, and to kind of get best practices and innovations all together. One clear difference is I won't have to cycle back and forth between uh, MHS and here as much. So we have a lot of work ahead for the medical staff, as well as for all the, 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 the staff in general, um, but we certainly look forward to it. I think that the new hospital will, will allow us to really match our current strengths with the facility that will be unmatched. So thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen and Chris. Um, so one last thing that uh, we want to do before we, before we leave, and that I'm going to ask Mike Ross and his team um, and the, um, to come to the front around, around the... Uh, <laughs> One, two, three.